I'm Courtney Julander, live on campus. There are more students living in poverty on campus than you might think. I'll have a live report. We'll give you some advice about protecting your vehicles. And for students on a budget, that means two-wheeled forms of transportation. And you don't have to have a rich uncle to use an iPad on campus. We'll show you where you can go to use one today for free. And San Jose State University remembers the anniversary of 9-11 in a creative way. Update news starts now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at San Jose State University, your source for what's happening with a fresh perspective on today's issues. You're watching Update News. Hello and welcome back to another semester of Update News. I'm Jenna Johnson. And I'm Rena Santoro. Thanks for joining us. New census figures out this week show more than 16% of Californians are living under the poverty line. That's the highest rate in eight years. It's hitting many students hard. Courtney Gerlander is standing by live on campus. Courtney? Hi, Rena. This week's census report confirms that the poverty rate has increased dramatically for young adults age 18 to 24. And here on campus, many people are hurting. But don't talk about it. I understand that we have students in our midst that are sitting next to us in our classrooms who didn't have a meal yesterday. Social worker Wigsy Silverston has been working for San Jose State University for more than 50 years okay. and has noticed an increase of students in poverty on campus. SJSU President Mohamed Kayomi is aware of the students struggling financially. Uh, the number of students that uh, San Jose State educates in that category, it's more than twice the number of what Stanford Caltech and USC educates jointly. Pell Grants from the federal government give undergrads anywhere from $555 to more than $5,000 based on the expected contribution from the student's family. SJSU student Lisa Weber shows that there is hope for students on a tight budget. I feel like it's getting crazier for college students to actually afford going to school. Since my family can't afford anything, I go through scholarships to the school and then also like other like private scholarships that I get and also financial aid and other grants. Students with extreme money issues can look into three specific areas, federal Pell Grants, scholarships, and online textbooks to ease the high cost of school. Live on campus, Courtney Jolander, Update News. San Jose police are investigating a sexual assault that occurred near the campus. Two female victims were attacked early Sunday morning while walking on East San Salvador Street near the intersection of 9th Street. A man approached them from behind and groped them. They escaped the man by hitting the attacker with a soda can. Neither victims was injured. Uh, in this situation, there were two uh, individuals, two women, who were walking together, and that's the right thing to do is always walk in numbers. The more uh, in numbers, the, 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 the safer it is. The attacker, described as a Latino, in his 30s, with short black hair, between 5 feet 5 and 5 feet inches tall. He was wearing a black shirt with a logo and blue jeans. Police say this is not related to another groping incident that occurred on the campus the previous week. And the smell of an electrical fire still linger in the halls of Dwight Bentel. After a visiting fire chief expressed concern over the air quality last week, interim journalism pro professor Bra Brooker agreed further testing was needed. Experts are now testing gas levels as well as particulates both inside and outside the building. Results of the second test are expected by the end of next week and will determine if the building is safe, which is especially important with people with lung conditions. Uh, but, sure. so. I have mild asthma. It's not really a problem most of the time, but when it does flare up, it's just an annoyance. I mean, I got to get medication for it. The University Environmental Health and Safety Director says at this point, there's no reason for anyone to be alarmed. And SJSU is making new technology available for students. iPads are a tool most students would love to use for their education, but they can't afford to buy it. Brian Dorico reports. At the Dr. Martin Luther King Library, students, faculty, and staff can borrow something more than books. The Student Computing Service Center is lending iPads for up to four hours at a time. Students are using the tablet computers for everything from leisure activities to taking notes. I think it's a great opportunity for students to learn about um, the new technology that Apple's coming out with. You can also rent the iPads here on the top floor of Macquarie Hall in room 533 at the Casa Student Success Center. Peer mentor Michelle Pasqua helped bring the iPads to the Success Center. 
She sees this as a good opportunity to get students' hands on the latest technology. Um, I think just like the innovation that it brings with having technology at your fingertips. The iPads are easy to check out, and they bring a new option for technology to SJSU. On campus, Brian DeRico, Update News. College Day in San Jose is coming up on September 30th. The goal is to make college a reality that comes to life for students. San Jose Mayor Chuck Reed announced the event this week to fifth graders at Horace Mann Elementary. Organizers say it's a day to get goals for kids to aim high and dream big because college can make dreams come true. School administrators are trying to get their students interested in the whole concept of college. For today, the message we really wanted kids to hear is that, you know, college is for them. College is for everybody. You know, don't let anybody tell you that college is not for you. You know, sometimes I think students, the doors have been closed for students by other people. Educators from all over Santa Clara joined the kickoff, as well as San Jose State students and students from other universities. And more students, more bikes, and more bike theft. Because of this ongoing problem, some students are reluctant to park their bikes on campus. But Amanda Del Castillo shows us the biggest trouble spot and ways to prevent your bike from being stolen. Hundreds of bikes come to campus daily and all too often leave with the wrong person. Bicycle theft at SJSU is frequent and frustrating. The campus made room for 400 more bikes in the enclosure this semester. The cages allow students to park their bikes for free with a deposit of $10 for an access key. But senior Kelvin Yee remains skeptical about campus efforts. Anyone could just pay $10 and get a key to the cage. SJSU's commute coordinator Otto Malara says the campus's downtown location is adding to the problem and says the 4th Street side of MLK Library is the hottest theft spot. The bike racks that are right there, I think they have a very high, I think the highest uh, percentage of uh, bike thefts. Malara encourages students to use U-locks instead of chain locks. Probably one U-lock isn't enough, which is kind of weird to say. Public relations senior Ryan Wichurch had two of his bikes stolen from campus, totaling $1,000 in lost property. Wichurch says he takes his bike with him wherever he goes. Quite honestly, I just don't trust my bike locked outside. The senior says bike theft is a continuing issue that doesn't seem to get solved. In order to prevent future theft, it's important to properly secure a bike to a post with a durable lock. The Transportation Solutions Office on campus allows students to trade in their old locks for brand new U-locks. In San Jose, Amanda Del Castillo, Update News. More than 200 people gathered on campus last weekend to commemorate the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. They observed a moment of silence, but for the most part, talent lit up the night. Fernanda Lopez reports. Singers, dancers, and poets filled the music building Sunday night in remembrance of September 11th. Into the Night, hosted by the Music and Dance Department, shone light on that tragic day 10 years ago. SJSU music professor Lena Chiankas is one of several professors who performed. Our gift to the university and to the community at large. So as you could see by the turnout, it was uh, more than more than we anticipated. ROTC student Dylan Hagerty says he is proud to participate in the color guard for the event and says he remembers 9-11 too. I decided to become part of Air Force ROTC because I wanted to serve my country and being part of a 9-11 memorial ceremony was, I was very happy to be part of it. The concert began with the singing of the national anthem followed by another musical performance by Professor Joseph Frank. I mean, we feel strongly that, that music and dance is a communicative art form, mm -hmm. and they touch the hearts. And we, had, we heard it in the poetry that was spoken th today. A candlelight vigil ended the night to the sounds of a solo trumpet outside of the music building. On campus, Fernanda Lopez, Update News. And for years, San Jose State has been had a reputation for not only having a large number of students, but also having a large number of international students. Study abroad administrators say SJSU is third in California's most desirable exchange program locations, right next to San Diego and San Francisco. Reporter Gina Esposito is live on campus to tell us why this year we might see more exchange students than ever before. Gina? 
Of the 28,000 students that attend San Jose State, about 3,000 are international students. While some are here to earn a degree, others are here for just a semester. This year, San Jose State has the largest number yet. It's, really, it's interesting for the exchange students because they, they expect they're going to see Californians, you know, like blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, students and they look out and there are students from all over the world on campus. Study abroad supervisor Katie Bell says international students are dealing with the same problems as American students. Top of the list, housing. The broad office set up a Facebook group in the summer for exchange students who weren't able to get housing on campus or in the international house. A few of them got housed in the hotel which is like a couple of miles away so that's kind of just like a bit of a dampener on their experience because obviously they wanted to stay on campus and have like their whole American life. Even American students coming back from their broad program were included in the group. The group helps students make friends and solve their problems efficiently. Uh, apparently you could work in California which you weren't able to do in some other states so that was definitely a factor which was good for here. There are 105 San Jose State students studying abroad this semester compared to the 97 exchange students that are here this semester. That's 40 more than last year. Live on campus, Gina Esposito, Update News. And much more is ahead. Up, ne up next on Update News, find out how an SJSU, SJSU student are enjoying performing at the San Jose Rep. You see some famous faces as you walk through campus. Art is being used to cover an otherwise boring site. Check it out yourself. And recruiter, recruiters are on campus signing up women, but not talking about the military. These women are not toting rifles. Later in sports, why the UCLA game was a homecoming for some Spartans who've been away from friends and family. But first, students sound off on whether it's good to go Greek. It's a great way to meet people, go out and have fun, um, get a social life in school. I think it's just a great way to meet people and to network. Like, I have my current job right now because of it. Because all the networking involved and you get to meet a lot of new people. It's a real good connection as far as trying to become, getting jobs um, when you get out of college as well as enjoying yourself while you're on college and having something to do um, all your four years while you're here. Um, frat boys think they're hella hard, but on the streets one-on-one -on -one, they're not hard at all. It's like a, one big sisterhood. Um, I, I'm on the outside looking in, so I kind of think that it's just one of those things where it's a group of friends that's all there for the same common need. A lot of guidance here at San Jose State. Um, it allowed me to be more punctual, more professional. I actually think the Greek life is really good. I'm actually a part of the Greek organization uh, here on campus. Uh, one thing that I really liked about it that really drew me into it was the sense of brotherhood. Some people are saving money by saving coupons. In fact, it's become an obsession. I have a story with a coupon queen. Marquette says oops. spending 15 hours a week searching for coupons could save Ashley Marquette 1500 a month. This new mother in San Jose has been influenced by the television show Definitely. Extreme Coupons to save her new family money. I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to get on this because they were saving so much money. While on maternity leave from her job as a bartendress, Marcoida says she would research on Twitter and find extreme couponers who told her where and when the best deals were for the week. It's really important to me to stock up for like months in advance because I don't know how much money I'm going to have next month or but if I have like goods like food and diapers, all the necessities, then I'm okay. With so many slips of paper, Marcoida organizes her coupons in a small folder. There's a slot for food, drinks, baby necessities, house appliances, and cosmetics. Even when Marcoida goes out shopping, she helps others save money by noticing what's in their shopping carts. I gave them four of my coupons, and I told them if you buy four, then you get four dollars worth in rewards. Basically like you're buying it for free. Marcoida says it's like Christmas every day when the mailman comes. 
As a new student unit construction drags on, murals are adding a splash of color and culture. The blue walls across from the Cesar Chavez are receiving a facelift. The project Better Than Blue is an ongoing collaboration between the Art History Department and Art Club Dirty Brushes. The murals showcase self-portraits from famous artists, ranging from Rivera to Van Gogh, besides a brochure. Project Info can be called up with a self-guided cell tour. SJSU Art History Program head Ann Simonson says its a goal was to create really a connection with the artist. fun and for people walking by to be able to dial up artists and get some sort of response from an artist of the past. The automated tour can be accessed with just a quick call. Typing in the corresponding number and then the pound key calls up a description, description of the work and 200 page online catalog. Produced by art history students will also be available this December. Businesses are under attack in neighborhood near SJSU and the economy is not to blame. Graffiti is the enemy. From gangs tagging their turf to would-be artists signing their names to versions of the Mona Lisa, graffiti is a reoccurring theme on the south side of campus. Police say they have seen an increase in the last five years. In the area south of the campus is graffiti tagging. We also have a lot of graffiti tagging on the campus. The police say tagging gangs go around in a competition, trying to one-up each other with the most prominent graffiti. UPD arrested one graffiti artist on campus this year. If you see any illegal tagging, go on and encourage to call 911. And to join or not to join, that is the question that many incoming students are asking themselves when it comes to sororities and fraternities. Recruitment has just ended and now there are hundreds of new Greeks on campus. Nearly 200 young women signed up to spend their weekend in their high heels to find their home away from home. Sorority recruitment started on Friday and ended on Monday when the women received a letter of acceptance or bid to one of the six houses. This weekend has been a whirlwind, um, but it's very exciting, very new, obviously, because I've never done this before. From house tours to philanthropy day, these future sisters got an inside glimpse on what real sorority life is like. There are certain houses that I felt more connected with, but they each were, I mean, all the girls were so genuine. Alpha Phi alum Erin Sterner says whether you are a commuter or just looking to get involved on campus, joining a sorority is more involved than you'd think. So that's why we put in so much effort to have a recruitment process where we get girls to come in and see other like-minded women and build the support system here on campus. Sterner says that even though she's an alum of a chapter, she couldn't have imagined a better way to spend her weekend. It's still great to come back and see that women are as excited to come back and join the chapters and that your legacy kind of carries on. So if you see women across campus with Greek letters on their clothes, feel free to ask them what new organization they just joined because most likely they'll be happy to tell you. And San Jose is joining cities such as Stockholm and Barcelona in having a bike sharing program. Bike sharing is a system where users can rent a bike from a sharing pod for a small fee, take it for a ride, and then return it to the pod closest to them. This will help students who don't own bikes travel the city and gives another transportation option. And it would just, you know, if people don't, don't have a bike or don't have a place to store it or it's not convenient to, uh, you know, have a, have a bike and, and you have to lock it and, you know, uh, store it basically somewhere. That way it's just more convenient. You take a bike and leave it in a different pod. You take in one pod, let's say, you know, at the 4th Street and leave it in the campus village and you drive home. This program is funded by a grant, also bringing bike sharing programs to San Francisco, Redwood City, Mountain View and Palo Alto. Amanda, tell us what's going on new in San Jose. Rena, this week San Jose State was busy. Dancing in midair is not something many can do, but some students on campus are showcasing their moves by doing just that. Melissa Rios has the story. Kicks, flips, and twists in midair. This new wave of dance is called tricking, and Management Information Systems senior Jack Vu organizes the dance sessions on campus. He says tricking is easier than it looks. Honestly, anyone could do it because at first I thought I couldn't do it and like, I started trying and like, you start learning. It's a combination of gymnastics and martial arts where trickers express themselves by launching their bodies into the air while doing a series of moves. But it's not always the moves that are the hardest. Tricker Jolene Tran says it's not easy being the only girl sometimes. Like I get a lot of stuff from guys 
well, they're mostly jokes, but still, like, you know, like, oh, you can't do that because you're a girl, or you can't be as good, or whatever, and that's, that sort of sucks. But she says it's all in good fun. These trickers meet every Thursday at noon, and although they haven't been recognized as an SJSU club, Boo says he might make it official. Uh, we have a few, like, about like, 10, 12 students here that uh, trick with us, and like I'm pretty sure other people will want to try it too, so we definitely look into that. These tricking sessions take place right here in front of Tower Hall, and the group encourages anyone to come out and join them. On campus, Melissa Rios, Update News. For those students looking to grab a healthy bite, there is a new cafe in the business courtyard. Grounded offers all vegetarian and organic options, including specialized coffee drinks and snacks. Student leader Melissa Newman says the new cafe is already receiving positive feedback. And there was a need for vegetarian options on campus where everywhere you can go and you kind of have to make it vegetarian. Um, you can't just walk up and have it be like, um, oh, this is good and I know it's vegetarian. Grounded is the only eatery on campus that offers strict vegetarian options. From the cups and straws to the fruits and coffee, everything is recycled or gathered locally. Lights, camera, action. The competition has begun. SJSU welcomed the world's largest student, and student film and music festival back to campus Wednesday. Campus Movie Festival rolled out the red carpet for its kickoff event. This yearly competition gives college students one week to film, edit, and produce a five-minute movie. There is no limit to the number of people in a group. Festival organizers gave the first 75 groups Apple laptops, Panasonic HD camcorders, and all participants receive free training. While you're in college, things are free. This is a free festival for um, San Jose State students. Um, take advantage of it, get your hands dirty, get out there, make a movie, and have some fun. Equipment must be turned in on Tuesday, and the finale is October 11th in Morris Daily Auditorium. That's all that's going on in San Jose this week. Awesome. Thanks, girl. Coming up next, we'll have sports. Dominic Urita will be here to fill us in on football. And it was a long trip to the Southland for the Spartans, but they did better than the week before against another Pac-12 powerhouse. We'll bring you the action. We'll show you how one athlete fell when he played against his hometown team in front of his family and friends. And Spartan Nation can now enjoy the game from a brand new perspective. But first, students sound off on whether they prefer a Mac or a PC. I use a Mac because it just works. Well, if I had the money, I would totally get a Mac because the cameras are sick. But I guess I'd have to deal with a PC since I'm on a college budget. Mac is probably the better way to go simply because there's less issues that pop up with it. And I've heard that the people at the Mac store are really easy and kind of like fun to deal with. I prefer PC just because you don't need to have certain programs. Uh, to be involved. PC for me because it just, I don't know, it just seems a little cheaper at times. Mac seems to be more expensive. Uh, I prefer a Mac because uh, you don't get the kind of viruses you do with uh, PCs. All right, Dom, so I heard that the Spartans went down to the Rose Bowl, my hometown, and they did a little bit better this week. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, they needed to play better this week, and that's exactly what they did. After a lopsided loss against Bay Area rival Stanford, the Spartans faced another Pac-12 foe. SGSU traveled to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl to take on UCLA, and as Howard Cowan reports, the first ever meeting between the schools was close until the very end. The Bruins got on the board with a Ryan Franklin one-yard run. SJSU responded with a touchdown run by David Freeman, capping a 12-play, 88-yard drive. But the boys from Westwood scored with five minutes left in the half on the pass to Joseph Foria. It's halftime here at the Rose Bowl with the score UCLA 14, San Jose State 7. The Spartans have been led by sophomore Desmond Stewart. He got the start over the senior Matt Faulkner after he suffered a concussion last week. Both teams exchanged field goals until Brandon Rutley broke through the line on third and one, scampering 65 yards, tying the game at 17. Yeah. 
but that was all the offense the Spartans could muster. Azusele added a field goal and this Derek Coleman touchdown run sealing the victory. You're going to have a mistake here and there. They're not going to play perfect. Um, and uh, but, but it was a good hard fought football game, one that we, um, we feel like we should have came out on top. I thought we ran the ball a lot better, you know, a touchdown run, you know. It really helped us in uh, us running the option, been uh, open up our run game a lot more. Though the Spartans did suffer another road loss, improvements to the ground attack are something to build on. At the Rose Bowl, Howard Cowan, Update News. Although none of the Spartan football players have ever played at the Rose Bowl, last week's game was a homecoming for many of them. Friends of wide receiver Chandler Jones were able to see him play for the first time since high school. Ryan Kern reports. The environment at the Rose Bowl can be <laughs> overwhelming. But for Chandler Jones, it felt like home. I'm glad to go back and just see everybody, so it's going to be good. Just like several dozen of his teammates, Jones is from the Los Angeles area. His friends and family aren't able to see him play much anymore. But this time around, 50 loved ones were in attendance. What does it mean to have everyone who's going to be there watching you? Uh, I'm really excited to have my, uh, my mom, my family, all my cousins, my little cousins who look up to me and stuff. All right, with that, it is now time for the top play. Oh, yeah. Let's go number 10. Jones made national headlines last season when he cracked SportsCenter's top 10 plays. The swing pass makes everybody miss. This year, he earned a starting position for the Spartans. I came here as a walk-on, and now I, I earned a scholarship and earned a starting spot, so it means a lot to just be able to come out here week by week and just uh, show what I have to prove. Coach McIntyre says the sophomore starter is important to their success. Chandler's a, a spark plug for us and a very good football player, and uh, he'll keep making plays for us. And even though he did not score, seeing everyone again was just as important. At the Rose Bowl, Ryan Kern, Update News. Fans have packed Spartan Stadium for home football games at San Jose State since it was built in 1933. Now in its 78th year, the structure is getting a new feature. Fans should have no trouble seeing replays this season with a new video board measuring 36 feet wide. So we've put in a, uh, a brand new video board in Spartan Stadium. It replaces the old digital scoreboard that, that's been in there for 30 plus years. Uh, the new board is, is state of the art in every way possible. Bobian says along with providing a crisp picture for replays, the Dactronics video board is also beneficial for promotions and advertising. The video board is part of an ongoing effort by Spartan Athletics to upgrade the stadium. Efforts started in 2010 when they replaced grass with turf and will continue next year with hopes to build a new skybox over the north end zone. Jenna, I got a chance to see the scoreboard and it's pretty awesome. Great. Thanks. That'll do it for now. Thanks for staying up late with us. Be sure to check us out on Facebook by searching SJSU Update News. Now go get some rest so we can see you again next week. Good night.